Oh hi, fancy seeing you here. You just caught me poning noobs on RuneScape. So why am I out here? So after the terrors that were my last video, I've decided to go to Monkey Gum Fire Trail, and I'm halfway there now. So after I've got my Falador fix, I'll be carrying on my way. However, I've decided to stop at Nepean Dam, if that's how you pronounce it. So have some drone footage and some fast forwarded driving to keep your jowls moist in the meantime. So Monkey Gum is about three hours south of Sydney. I'm choosing to go through Wollongong and just take the most direct route until I get close enough. I'm going to take two treks to access Monkey Gum, which are Dean's Gap Road, which you can see as letter A, and then Mint Bush Road, which is B. Now these follow on to join up with Monkey Gum, which is C. So the next footage you see is going to be taken from about here, where I'm going to set up camp for the night. So I don't have an axe. All I've got is this very baby machete. So I'm going to use that to get some wood that's already lying here. So I've discovered a way to get your fire going if you haven't got a leaf blower. I think that's somewhat successful. Home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Thank you. None of you should be learning how to cook from watching camping videos. So stop it. I've learned a few things since the last time I used this camera. Firstly, make sure it's on a proper quality setting. Secondly, only talk when the car's not moving. So at the moment, I'm just at the entrance of Dean's Gap Road, and then I'm going to follow this on through to Mint Bush Trail, and then hopefully that leads on to Monkey Gun. But I guess we'll find out. I ended up camping just at this point here. It's a pretty decent campground to be honest. It's a bit close to the road though. And you do get curious helicopters circling overhead. So I'm gonna head up through here 
point one is Mint Bush Trail. And then when I follow that through, it should lead on to Monkey Gum at the end. Well, uh, that's the midpoint of Monkey Gum anyway. I think the entrance is somewhere down here. So yeah, when it gets difficult, which it isn't, I'll air down and see what happens. So these gates are going to represent the beginning of the track, I guess. Um, what I'll do is I'll pull up further up ahead where it gets more difficult and then I'll air down and put it in four wheel drive. But until then, I guess there's no real need. Yep, it's less than ankle deep, but unfortunately that's probably going to be the case for most of them. But I'd rather do that than get bogged. So from what I can tell from all the other videos I've seen, this is the beginning of it, which is a pretty steep drop off. Again, doesn't look like it, but it is. So from what I've seen, it'll go one of two ways. Either I'll cruise up it, or I'll get stuck horribly and have to winch. And I have a very weak winch, so that won't go too well. Thank you. 
So there's this one a little bit further up, which I think is much more of a challenge than the other one. The thing I was mostly worried about is how deep these little ruts are, but it doesn't seem so bad. But the rest of these, they're basically vertical. Winch job was pretty interesting. Um, if that's right at the beginning, hopefully the rest of it's going to be equally as good. But we shall see. another one of these weird little drop-off things but this one includes a nice little post to smash your panels on on these little things I'm just gonna chuck all my lockers on because the last thing I want to do is wander into that piece of wood there and smash my beautiful square panels. righty on the steering wheel got me out of that because the front wheels were spinning so I drove up the bank a little bit and it got me that extra little bit of grip
So I'm trying to use my lockers as little as possible, simply because I find they get you into a lot more trouble than they get you out of. And this is because it makes your car able to climb absolutely anything, meaning it'll climb it until it rolls onto its lid. So I'll only stick them on when I know I'm in a safe place. And I'll only stick them on while I'm using it. So right now, I think I might need lockers. There you go. So I found this unfortunate bastard. Looks like he wants to be JDM, set his camber too high. So if it's your car and you're watching, oh, you can't see it. It's 10 past 11 in the morning on the 13th of April and your car still looks like this. It's actually quite humbling seeing something like this. Makes me realize I am pretty much buggered if I do break anything, seeing as I'm on my own and there's 10 kilometer walk to the nearest outlet, I think. So yeah, I better be more careful, I guess. So this is that rock gap. In the videos, it really doesn't look like much. But needless to say, I will not be doing this. I'm gonna be going up this nice, easy one right here. Look how easy you are. But not you.
But although it doesn't look like anything, this is probably the most uncomfortable bit of the whole track. It's off camber. There's a nice little trap to put your wheels in. All I ended up doing is getting the best I could and then racing my way through it so the car didn't have enough time to tip over. And that's about all you can do. So from what I can tell, that's the end of the track. If I turn out to be wrong, then I guess I'll edit this out. But if you can see it, then it is the end of the track. I definitely feel like I've leveled up as an off-road driver as a result of this trip. But at the same time, I never went into this thinking I was an expert driver. I don't think I struggled on anything there, but I think that was mainly due to the vehicle rather than my driving skills. I think what happened was I probably screwed some stuff up and the vehicle was good enough to get itself out of the situation but I can definitely see why a lesser vehicle would struggle in the same situation, hence the reputation for this trek. Bye.